After a lot of excavation and research inside Peru's lands, scientists discovered genius facts about the ancient American civilization that created an incredible system to communicate, record, and store information that allowed them to exchange messages and information throughout this giant empire that they had and thrived. This Inca civilization didn't know how to write, and they didn't have advanced computers like we have today, but the creativity that they had to communicate with each other is simply incredible. The Inca civilization was located in the Andean region of South America, primarily in present-day Peru, but also extending into Bolivia, Ecuador, Chile, and Argentina. The Incas were the largest pre-Columbian civilization in the Americas, and their empire extended over a vast area of land, stretching from present-day Colombia in the north to Chile in the south. The Inca Empire was established in the 13th century and lasted until the arrival of the Spanish conquistadors in the 16th century. The people of the Inca were a unique civilization for many reasons, but one of the most fascinating facts is definitely their Chasqui system, which was a vast network of runners that allowed the Inca rulers to communicate across their vast empire. The discovery of the Chasqui system is a fascinating story that shows us something very smart and special that the Inca civilization created that has never been repeated ever again. The Chasqui system was a sophisticated relay network of runners who carried messages across the Inca Empire, which spanned over 2,500 miles along the Andes Mountains. The system was comprised of thousands of highly trained runners, each of whom was assigned a specific section of the empire to run, usually around 10 to 15 miles long. These runners would relay messages by passing them to each other in a series of handoffs, similar to modern-day relay races. The Chasquis runners were highly respected members of Inca society and were chosen from among the most physically fit and mentally sharp individuals in the empire. They were given special training in endurance, speed, and agility, and were equipped with a special tunic that allowed them to carry messages and goods on their back. The Incan civilization did not have a written language, which meant that messages had to be relayed orally. This was done through a system of runners who memorized and repeated messages to the next runner. Accuracy was crucial, and it was essential that messages were delivered correctly. Their job was considered so vital that they were exempted from other work-based taxes, such as farming or mining. The discovery of the Chasqui system is attributed to the Spanish conquistadors, who encountered it during their invasion of the Inca Empire in the early 16th century. The conquistadors were amazed at the efficiency of the system, which allowed the Inca rulers to send messages across their vast empire in a matter of days or even hours. The system also allowed the Inca rulers to maintain control over their vast territories and to quickly respond to any threats or challenges that arose. The Chasqui system was not only used for communication, but also for transporting goods and even people across the empire. The runners would carry a wide variety of items, from food and supplies to precious metals and textiles. They would also transport messengers and other important individuals, including the Inca rulers themselves. The discovery of the Chasqui system was a significant moment in the history of the Inca Empire, and the system was a testament to the Inca's ability to adapt to the harsh conditions of the Andes Mountains and to create highly efficient and effective means of communication and transportation. It also revealed the complex social and political structure of the Inca Empire, which relied on a vast network of runners to maintain its power and control. With that, another incredible system of communication was the Inca Code, also known as Kipu, which is a system of knots and cords used by the Incas for recording and communicating information. While the Incas had no written language, they used Kipu to keep track of administrative records, census data, and even complex narratives. Each Kipu consisted of a main court, with secondary cords attached at various intervals. These secondary cords were then knotted in a specific pattern, creating a complex system of information storage. For centuries, the Kipu remained a mystery to outsiders, with no one able to decipher the intricate knot patterns. It wasn't until the mid-20th century that researchers began to make progress in cracking the code. In the 1950s, Peruvian archaeologist Terabio Mejes Espe made the first attempts to decipher Kipu, but his efforts were largely unsuccessful. It wasn't until the 1990s that researchers began to make significant progress in understanding the Inca code. Anthropologist Gary Orton from Harvard University began studying Kipu in detail, examining hundreds of examples and developing a systematic approach to decoding the knot patterns. Orton discovered that each Kipu 
consisted of a complex system of knots, with each knot representing a specific number or piece of information. The knots were arranged in groups, with each group representing a specific category, such as a person's name or a particular type of resource. The study of Kipu challenges our assumptions about the relationship between language and culture and forces us to rethink what it means to be literate," said Horton. Kipu are an important reminder that there is still so much we don't know about the cultures and civilizations that came before us," he added. Horton's work laid the groundwork for further research into the Inca Code. In recent years, a team of researchers led by Manuel Medrano from the Pontifical Catholic University of Peru has made significant progress in decoding Kipu. Medrano and his team have used computer algorithms to analyze the knot patterns, revealing previously hidden patterns and meanings. They have also discovered that Kipu could be used for more than just numerical data. Some Kipu contain intricate narratives, with different colors and knot patterns used to represent different characters and events. In addition to their accounting function, Kipu knots had various other uses. They were utilized to record historical information, stories, and ceremonies, and they may have also served as calendars. However, the most widely recognized use of kipus was for accounting. The knots, tied at various points on the vertical strings, represented numbers up to the thousands. Kipus recorded various information, such as the quantity of corn stored in a calca, the number of households in the village, and the number of llamas in a caravan transporting corn, potatoes, and cotton along the Inca road. Some kipus were highly complex, featuring hundreds of cords and knots. Chazkis received training in tying and deciphering the kipu knots. However, there were specialists known as kipu karmayuks, who had a more comprehensive understanding of the system. These specialists underwent four years of training to learn how to tie the knots, read and interpret the kipus, and maintain a kipu archive. Every community had kipu kamayuks, placed in proportion to its population. Even the smallest community had at least four Kipu Kamayuks. The discovery of the Inca Code has opened up new avenues of research into Incan civilization, shedding new light on this ancient civilization. Researchers are now able to gain insights into the complex administrative systems and cultural practices of the Incas, as well as their mathematical and linguistic abilities. The Inca Code also has implications beyond Incan civilization. Its unique system of information storage could have wider applications in fields such as data science and cryptography. The Incas created a complex social organization that was characterized by a rigid hierarchy, a centralized government, and a strong emphasis on collective work and communal ownership of resources. At the top of the Inca social hierarchy was the Sapa Inca, or emperor, who was believed to be the son of the sun and the supreme ruler of the Inca Empire. The Sapa Inca was considered to be divine, and his word was law. He was assisted by a council of advisors, or Amautas, who were responsible for managing the affairs of the empire. Beneath the Sapa Inca were the nobles, or Incas, members of the royal family or other elite families. The Incas were given land and resources by the emperor, and they were responsible for administrating the provinces of the empire. They also served as military commanders and priests, and they played a key role in maintaining the social order. Beneath the Incas were the commoners, or Ayus, who made up the majority of the population. The Ayus were organized into small communities based on kinship ties, and they lived in communal houses or compounds. The Ayus were responsible for farming, herding, and other forms of collective work. They were also required to provide tribute to the emperor in the form of food, textiles, and other goods. The Inca government was highly centralized, with the emperor and his advisors controlling all aspects of the empire. The empire was divided into provinces, each of which was governed by an Inca noble. The nobles were responsible for collecting tribute from the Oyus in their province, and they were required to report to the emperor on a regular basis. It's interesting to point out that Graham Hancock has written extensively on the Inca civilization, and he believes that the Inca had access to advanced knowledge and technologies that allowed them to communicate and have since been lost or forgotten. He has argued that the Inca were skilled engineers and architects, with the ability to shape and move large megalithic stones for their buildings, such as those found at Machu Picchu. Hancock has also suggested that the Inca had knowledge of a global cataclysm that occurred around 12,000 years ago, and that this event led to the loss of advanced knowledge and technologies. He believes that the Inca and other ancient cultures around the world may have inherited some of this knowledge and passed it down through myths and legends. That's it for today. 
subscribe to our channel and hit the bell.